Hi, and welcome back to the Security Simplified series. This time, we're going to talk all about hacking SSO. SSO, or single sign-on, is a feature that allows you to access multiple services that belong to the same company without logging in multiple times. For example, if you are logged into Facebook, you won't have to re-enter your credentials to use Messenger. This way, companies with many websites don't have to keep track of their users separately for each site, and you won't need to log in multiple times when using the different sites provided by the same company. So three of the most common ways of implementing SSO are cookie sharing, SAML, and OAuth. So first, companies can send users a cookie that can be shared across the company's sites. This is called share session SSO. Browser cookies are automatically shared across subdomains if their domain flag is set to a common parent domain. For example, this cookie will be sent to any subdomain of facebook.com. And this is the simplest SSO setup. But this approach also comes with its limitations. For starters, shared session SSO cannot be used to implement SSO across services that do not share parent domain. You cannot use share session SSO to share authentication information across facebook.com and messenger.com, for example. And another limitation of shared session SSO is the safety of cookies. If attackers can steal the shared cookie by compromising a single subdomain, all of the SSO sites that share the same cookie would become compromised. Usually, attackers can steal the session cookies by finding a subdomain takeover, an RCE, an XSS, or any other vulnerability that would expose a user's cookies. And because the compromise of a single subdomain could mean a complete compromise of the entire SSO system, using shared cookies as an SSO mechanism greatly widens the attack surface for each individual service. Another common SSO mechanism is SAML, or the Security Assertion Markup Language. SAML enables SSO by facilitating information exchange between three parties, a user, an identity provider, and the service that the user is trying to access. The user will obtain an identity assertion or a proof of identity from the identity provider and use that to authenticate to different service providers. Since the identity assertion is used to prove the identity of that user, its integrity is critical. Applications digitally sign these identity assertions to ensure that no one can tamper with them. And SAML can be secure if the digital signature is implemented properly. However, its security will break apart if attackers can find a way to bypass the signature validation. And finally, OAuth is another way of implementing SSO. It is essentially a way for users to grant scope-specific access tokens to services through an identity provider. The user obtains an access token from the identity provider and then passes that to the service that they want to access. And then the service provider can use that access token to obtain user information from the identity provider. Attackers can bypass OAuth protection mainly by stealing access tokens. In this series, let's talk about the different ways that companies implement SSO and how each SSO implementation works under the hood and each of their security implications.